I'm riling up these guys on Discord. <laughs> if you guys are watching. <laughs> uh. Okay, time to start the stream. Hello, everyone. And this is Tax Tech here, stumbling to get my music playing. There we go. So, last time we built this, right? We used our Demon Depths saved files to build this. Anyway, so I'm reading the Discord messages, sorry. Um, this was built from the Demon Depths files that we had saved previously. So what I want to try and do is a little bit crazy. I know it may not be the fastest, it may not be the most efficient, but I'm going to do it because I want to. And that's all the reason I need. <laughs> so um, I'm going to try and build a Minecraft mod. And this Minecraft mod is going to basically allow us to scan a set of blocks and save the data about the blocks that we've placed, right? So we'll build a, a bridge, for example. And on this bridge, right, will be um, a series of full blocks that will be the sides. Then in the middle of that block, there might be half blocks. We will save that there's a half block. We will save that there's a full block. We will save that there's a stair and they say that the stair is rotated in this orientation. And all of that information that we save will then go into a file. And that file will be read by some other similar Python file or Python script in Blender to convert the that, that uh, uh, what I would say, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That, hmm orientation of set of blocks into a blender uh, set of objects. I would also like ideally to optimize that by saying if there is two adjacent blocks together, so one here, one here, and they're both together and they're the same size block, that those blocks get combined into one of size two, right? Um, might be a little tricky to do that, but we're gonna give it a try. Um, so let's get started, right? So step one, download Forge. Like literally, I'm gonna do this from scratch here. Um, so if you've ever wondered how I go about making Minecraft mods, this is it. So I've already got the Forge downloaded. Uh, you can go to files.minecraftforge.com, get the F Forge mod SDK, right? And I personally just go to my D drive all uh, code Minecraft and then whatever the project name is, right? So I'm going to create a new folder. Uh, I think I actually, yeah, I'm going to create a new folder, create a new folder, MC to blender, All right? I'm going to enter on that. We're going to enter on that. And then in the forge MDK zip file that you get, you basically want to copy just about everything. Um, and I'm going to take out the source file. I think it is. Yeah, source we don't need. So we don't need source. We do want the eclipse. We do want the gradle. Get ignore. Build.gradle. Credits. Sure, sure, sure. Basically everything, right? I'm going to take all that junk, put it in here, paste. There we go. And I'm going to go to this path. So I'm going to go to my command line here. Uh, we've got Blender open still from that. Dang it. So new new command window. In CD dot dot CD MC2 Blender. There we go. And we do Gradle W. 
cradle w um setup no, uh what is it setup decomp workspace i believe that's the name of it right cradle w whoa did it not include cradle w that bat what is going on here um I didn't grab it, okay. We gotta make sure we grab the batch file. Come on. There we go. Now we should be able to run that. Set up decomp workspace. That's gonna download the Minecraft uh, jar files, decompile them, set up the forge source files the what is it mcp mappings all that stuff right so it's gonna get do all the behind the scenes stuff that you really don't have to monkey with while this is running though we can go ahead in our github and set up a github for this i have not decided if i'm going to make this github public or private um I'm not sure, just not sure. The Demon Depths itself will be a private one, no doubt, doubt about that. But this particular tool, I could see others using this, right? So if you wanted to take from Minecraft and just get a Blender file in the end, uh, that could be useful for a lot of people, for a lot of different things. So there's a possibility, especially if there's interest in it, of making the Minecraft mod and the Blender Python piece uh, publicly available, the source code. So in this, uh, so this is our other one. We want to just commit everything. Initial testing setup of Blender of DD. Demon depths generation. Commit. Let's go ahead and add a new repository. Once this one finishes. Probably hitting my CPU pretty hard right at the moment. Doing all this stuff at once. 70%, yeah. Decompiling Minecraft is actually CPU intensive, believe it or not. Or it can be. CPU. Didn't want this to just be waiting, but it is what it is. It is part of the process of doing this, right? Oh, it's the disk that's getting hammered right now. My D drive is 70, 90% utilized right now. Can't write the files fast enough, probably to get commits. For 300 plus files. Let's see, is that write time or is it active? It's mostly writes. Go 60% on that. So, if you're one of the guys that was discussing in Discord that I'm crazy for doing this, please speak up and let's talk about that. <laughs> Maybe I am. I'm okay with that though. So that's committed now, so we can go ahead and say new repository, 
and find the path to this one. Wait, we don't want new repository. We want to add a local repository to Wando. So Unity, we want to go Minecraft instead. MC to Blender. I think you making a game with it, then it's a big time sink, but making a mod for Minecraft could be neat, but could, I, but I believe there's Minecraft conversion stuff out there already. So there probably is, and that's fine. Uh, I just want it to work the way I want it to work, <laughs> right? And I guess I'm being particular about it. Okay, so we're gonna create this. Uh, a mod for scanning blocks to a file. Scanning Minecraft blocks. That can be read by a Blender Python script to import the, the shape of the structure into Blender. Okay, we're gonna get ignore, we're gonna do... I don't think I have one for Minecraft. I'll have to add my own later. Uh, create repository. Okay, so it's our initial stuff. We're good to go on our Git, which is great because I always forget until later on that I regret not doing it earlier. Okay, so build successful. So now that we've done that, I use Eclipse, so we're gonna just say uh, Eclipse. I think it's just Eclipse. So it's downloaded all the Minecraft stuff, decompiled them, set everything up, and now we're just saying we want an Eclipse instance to be created so that we can use that. And somewhere down here, I've got my latest version of Eclipse. Is it that? I don't think that's it. Is that the latest version? That's an old version, isn't it? Kepler, K, Oxygen, that's more recent. Why is it? I don't have them as in the right order. I don't know. Okay, so yes, this is the one I want to use. So we're going to browse to our workspace. That workspace is going to be the same location we created our... Um, uh, repository in, but one layer deeper. So our MC to Minecraft, our MC to Blender, sorry. And then Eclipse. We're going to say, okay, we're going to launch. So I did earlier today take a quick uh, look at how to import JSON files from Minecraft. So like the individual blocks, somebody's got some other program that they can import it into that creates an OBJ file, but that only gives you one block. That's not what I'm after. What I'm after is a set of blocks, right? I want to do the whole whole deal. Okay, so if I open this up all the way once it loads here, we should have a source. We do not have a source. Okay, so we have to add the source. So it's still doing some. Stop being slow. Might need to kill like some other programs like Unity for now and Blender. This Blender was eating multiple gigs the other night. Okay, now can we do it? Yes, we can. New folder we're gonna say right inside there src I think that's what we wanted new package um, so I always use project red dog as my domain that I own um, so it's going to be under that um, what are we gonna call this thing mc2 blender uh, project reddog.com I think it's all lowercase there we go let's open up another instance of Eclipse I'm going to use this as a reference over on my other one because I'm going to use a lot of the code from my normal mods right um, in fact yeah let's use this one 
just to get us jump started on this, right? Because it's been a while. So our build.gradle, we are going to heavily copy from the other one because it just makes my life easier. Wanna load up. And it's gonna be com.project red dog.com, something like that. It's gonna be mod ID. Instead of mod ID, it's gonna be MC2 Blender. All that's gonna be the same. We're not gonna mess with that. We're not gonna mess with this. Um, we will mess with this though for when I set it up on my build server. Okay, so yeah, this is all different. And I think it's because the properties on this is different. The source file um, needs to be set different. It's probably because I didn't have sources. Hello. How are you tonight, pineapple? So it's in the Minecraft up there, but it's like it's a build location. Let me see if I do this, properties, builders, Java builder, no, a build path, source. That's what I wanted to do. Um, that on my other screen here, let me use it for an example. Boop. Properties, and this is just because I killed the source folder, right? I shouldn't have done that. So, boom, properties, Java build path. We don't have anything for source. Yeah, okay, so add folder, source. And if I expand those out, looks like everything's the same. Then the other one, Inside source, we need to create some more folders. Supply and close, please. Yeah, those did not go where I thought they would. So let's kill those. So inside here, we need to create a new folder. Sure. Main. Yeah, we did it wrong already. We'll get there. Inside main. Do Java. Finish. Okay, and that becomes our build path. So it's not this, it is that subfolder. Java that we want to add. That looks good. Apply and close. So down here under source, under main, we want to add yet another folder. And this folder is going to be called resources. And under here, we go in and say add folders, resources, and all, none, no, none and no, okay. Fly close. So now if we just run this, what's it do, right? So if I hit debug, does it launch Minecraft? That's always a tricky part. Kill this other stuff from before. It does launch Minecraft. Don't know if we're gonna get an actual mod because we don't have our source file set up for it yet, but we will, we'll get there. Open up a few things on my other window while that's doing, it's loading. That was machine mod, was that one? Okay. And our build.gradle was the other piece I needed. So mods, we don't see the mod in there. Perfect. Okay, so we'll close this. Oh, we're gonna go to build.gradle first, which is this, okay. And it does say need, need to say this. We don't want com at the end. Whoa, 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 this isn't kinfolk. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> um, shiny object syndrome. Shiny 
Josh get ripped off. <laughs> it's, it's on hold. It's not dead, it's on hold. Hopefully it doesn't transfer to being dead later. Um, I don't think it will. It's on hold because I've got shiny object syndrome. I didn't say dead. It's not dead. Okay, so now under here we can add a new package. We got this all set up, right? Okay. So com dot project red dog dot mc2 blender. Okay, and in here, I tell it to where is it? Package representation hierarchical. It's another option I set. That might be it, and then it just shows up when we add stuff. So we add a new class now and call it uh, MC2 Blender. Perfect. Okay. And we need to say app mod. The back of that. We are going to get rid of the JSON checking of the update stuff because it never really worked before. Anyway, we will get rid of our GUI factory class because we don't have it yet. We can create it though. Let's go ahead and create our reference package. Reference. And our reference source file. Okay, and in there we need to create which pieces? Our mod ID, our mod name. And say MC2 Blender. MC2 Blender. Let's be a fancy case. We need our proxy setups like this and we'll say mc2 blender like that and i think that's going to take care of us back over here then uh, we can control s control shift o auto imports and we want to do the reference file in this particular one. oh refactor Rename, capital R, please. Finish. Control Shift O. There we go. Reference, reference. Yeah, that's right. No more errors there. Perfect. Okay, then we do our sighted proxy stoof. And the instance for the mod. Say MC2 Blender. Let's go ahead and refactor this one as well to get the case correct. Alright, we don't have iProxy set up yet. We'll get there. We've got our pre init, our init, and our post init we need to add. Lots of errors are going to come in with this stuff. That's okay. We're going to comment all this stuff out for now. We will be adding it in later is why I'm doing it this way. Um, I want to have it all set up in the file already. Get those imports we missed. Grab that. Okay, we reduced the errors down to the proxy piece. So let's set up the proxy next. Okay, so we need to add another package. In here, we're going to add yet another class, and it's going to be iProxy. And iProxy needs to have these methods defined in it. Come on, just if though, what you complaining about? Ah, interface. There we go. And next we go for client, or let's do common proxy. Okay, 
and it's just going to do the definitions of them. It's going to be abstract. It's going to implement. Uh, iProxy. Okay. Uh, extra thing there. New class. Uh, client. Okay, so while I'm doing this, what are all these proxies about? Well, in Minecraft, there's the server side, there's the client side, and you need to have both defined... Um, you need, need, each side does different things, right? So if it's on the client, it needs to render things. If it's on the server, then it just needs to know that things exist. It doesn't have to draw pictures for them, right? It doesn't need textures. It doesn't need to render anything at all. So that means that you're able to get away with um, that one. Um, less on the server. Um, there's also registering of network events and things like that. So I'm going to take all of these. Get rid of all of that. We're commenting it out. We will need to eventually do our mod blocks and mod items and all that stuff. But for now, let's just comment everything out and just get a basic setup going so that it compiles. So mod block colors, we're not going to do anything with block colors. That should take care of the client side. Mod key bindings, we might have some, but we'll, so we'll leave it in there for now. Uh, server proxy. So what's the server do, right? So server class server And the server is very basic. It just extends the, the comma. Like I don't want to do anything special there because it's all about rendering um, from my mods mostly. Okay, shift O, save. We've got a working mod, I think now. Let's run it. Won't do anything, but it should register itself and throw it into um, the list of mods in Minecraft. I don't think I have any commands defined in my mods anywhere else, so I probably won't use commands. What I'm thinking I'll do, I'll, I'll register an item with Minecraft, put it on its own custom tab. It's just gonna look like a stick. I don't care what it looks like. Um, that'll be our scanner wand like we have um, in the other mods that I've done. MC to Blender, cool. We've got a mod. Um, next up, we need to go and create another package. Let's do init. So we're gonna need that one. Let's create another one for, is it uh, item? Inside init, we're going to create a new class and we're going to do mod items. Do we want to do it with an item? Do we, do we want to do it with an item? Or do we want to do it with two blocks? To define the corners of the area we're scanning. Let's do it with an item. Tied that before. Mod items. In here, we're going to create a bunch of final statics of the item itself, right? Like that. I'm just using that as a um, template, really. Uh, this needs to be a object holder in the newer versions of Minecraft, is my understanding. Control shift O. There we go. Um, we need to have a class or a method in here that is called what? Two methods, I'm sorry. The first one is going to be init, I think. If I can find it, there it is. Right. And we're just going to say register an item. 
the second one is to register the renderers. It looks something like this. I'm gonna have a line that actually registers the thing. That's all there is to it. Control Shift O to get rid of some errors. There's still gonna be some in this. We'll deal with those in a moment when we actually get the item set up for this particular mod. So that takes us over to the items. Um, so we've got to find my item machine mod as its base, right? So we're gonna do item package class. What? We we're going to say it is going to be an item MC to Blender. And it is going to extend item. An inch. Okay. I'm gonna get rid of this. We're gonna control shift O. It's gonna ask us which item. We're gonna give a teleport item. And then the error message goes away. And in here, we're going to say public. I have a constructor. Constructor is going to have this name here. We're going to create our set of set our creative tabs. We're going to have a reference to. That's all good down here. It's this piece then that we need to do. So we need to create a package for a creative tab and all of the creative tab setup. So new package. Oops. Dot creative tab new class creative tab mc2 blender and this is going to extend nothing but we're going to have all of that added final creative tabs or shift o get all the imports going so I'm going to say mod items. We got to come back to that. We don't have the item set up in there. Um, we're only going to set up one of these so we can get rid of the other three. Other two, sorry. So the string is going to be MC to Blender. Items, sure. Okay. Back on item MC to Blender. We can take that name throw it in here we'll get rid of some errors on this this is going to be a new item scanner stick sure wand item scanner wand and we're just going to call it item scanner wand with the lowercase why lowercase i'm pretty sure you need it to be lowercase for uh, minecraft to pick it up correctly Item scanner wand, item scanner wand. Okay, we're not complaining anything except for that because we haven't created our item scanner wand yet. And item scanner wand, where are you on my other one? So this would be equivalent to say the machines. Those are a little overkill, a hose. All right, so in our item, new class uh, item scanner wand item scanner wand in this we're going to extend item mc to blender control shift o Okay, and we're gonna say public string registry name. Here, let's do it the easy way. Scanner wand, item scanner wand. Pick that name, put that there. We're good to go. Max stack size of one though, right? We only want one scanner one at a time. Okay, so over here, Control Shift O again, save. Got that import now. Up here, we can say mod items.item scanner wand. 
back in here then. So we've got rid of all of our compile errors. That was the real goal in doing that, right? So now we need to go to mod items in it and uncomment that line. And let's control shift O so we get our imports, save and debug. Oh, we didn't save everything. And there's an error, okay. Uh, creative tab, creative tab, tab, right there. And on that, we're gonna change the name of that. It doesn't make sense that it's a machine mod, but we'll fix it. MC2 Blender. Save that, go back over here, put that in there, boom. Okay, make sure my mic works. Is it going? Yeah, cool. Okay, so in 36 minutes, assuming this works, we've created a mod. We've got, got the Minecraft decompiled and set up and all that stuff. We've uh, created the mod so it can load. We've created a creative tab, we've created a item, and hopefully, when I create a world here, super flat, presets, redstone ready, just cause it's nice and pretty. Nice lighted well, no mobs. Uh, done, we are in creative, go. Now there won't be any pictures for anything, don't, don't get me wrong, it's gonna be ugly, right? For what we've done, but it's working. So we've got a creative tab, MC to Blender. There's our wand. And we got our wand in our hand. Again, no textures, no models for anything. We've only into this 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, so next, let's fire up this old version of Eclipse and get another project open, which is our scanner wand itself from the original Demon Depths. I want to look at its code to determine how we're knowing that things have been hit. Let's also kill the Minecraft sounds because I did not want that. I'm gonna do like 10% sounds. Put the music off. What they're off to. Okay, where are you loading at, Eclipse? Where are you? Close Minecraft. Here it is. So this is our scanner wand version. And in here we've got Endless Dungeon Scanner and it's just gonna be like an item in this. Uh, so it's gonna have some intercept on the item click. Uh, click. On player click, there we go. So on player click, we're checking to see if it's a left click or right click. So we get different actions for each. Okay, we might need to figure out how to do that in Forge because it's gonna be different. And basically we're getting the player sending the message saying that you did something at a specific spot, that you've clicked it basically. Um, we are also getting the location that was clicked. Get clicked block, okay. Uh, we are setting the Y to zero, so we're overriding the values in that, that version. We won't do that in this version. Uh, that's all there is to it. We're just setting it to location one. Really? Well, this is not very multiplayer friendly then. <laughs> Two people tried to scan at the exact same time of it over at each other. Okay, yeah, and then there's the second locations. And then that was the end of it, right? So the left click and the right click. Cool. So let's get that off screen here. Uh, we need to go back into our new one and on the item itself let's take a look so in my m machine mod i had machines that you could right click and they would do an action when you right click them so i'm trying to look for that code real quick on my other screen here in fact here we go so this is the code for the machines so if i want to like the lawnmower it's gonna on item use that we're overriding. So that's what we want to pick up. And we'll just steal that code right there. 
So the scanner wand, we will add that method. Now we're gonna start hacking away at this. We're gonna control shift O so we get all those imports. We do not want to spawn an actual entity. However, we might be interested in where that's at. So we've already got the X, Y, and Z. Only run on the server, we only want to run on the client. We do not want to spawn the entity. Get rid of that log. Pass or fail. Okay. Should be it. So where are we going to save this setting for the X, Y, and Z coordinates? I can do it on the main class, I think. So public static location, we'll do block POS location one and location two. Push shift O, import those block location uh, classes. Okay, and then we'll just say refer. I don't know, let's see. So it's uh, MC to Blender dot location one equals POS, and that should be all there is to it. Should be all this to it. That'll cover the one click, then we need the other click. Uh, let's see, so that's on item use. I believe that's a right click. I don't really remember. Now can we get the other click type? So. Here I'm going to do F3, that'll take us to the parent, F3 again, take us to that parent, and then say right. Called when a block is right clicked with this item, on item use. Called when the equipped item is right clicked. do it this way as soon as I find the right class scanner one please okay so we will set location one on the first on one right click the other that we will set is based on whether or not the player is sneaking so player dot is sneaking so if the player is sneaking, we will set location 2. Otherwise, we will set location 1. Just like that. That gives us two spots in the world. Left click for the first one, sneak left click for the second one. We've got our two points. Okay, now the command piece of this. How are we going to handle the command? Um, Demon Depths definitely has commands, but that's a uh, spigot or bucket plugin, not a Forge mod. An old version of Death Cube potentially has it. So let's take a quick browse at Death Cube Forge Edition, which should be on GitHub. That's my particular, yeah, sure. Tech stack. 
I got 27 repositories. Good grief. Death. Ooh, that's probably the bucket version. Plug in. Yeah, shoot. Great. So where's my forge version of this? So local drive then. D. All code. Minecraft Death Cube Source and main Java com project. Yeah, Death Cube Java open. So I think it's F5 in this program. Register commands mod commands, not in it. There we go. So, do I have a similar setup in my new mod. I don't know that I do. This is lawnmower. Okay, so there is no such concept as mod commands. So we will add that concept to our latest. So init mod commands. Very straightforward. Command game. Okay. So under init of our new one, which I'm getting confused which window is which now. This is the correct one. Yep. So a new class mod commands. And in this, we are going to just say three lines, basically. That. This will come later. Okay, now we need to get that particular mod command stuff. Open that one. And this is much more involved. Okay, this is what I thought. So, this is going to go under, what was it? Under a, a package called commands. Oops. Dot command. class and we're gonna call this command scan call it command scan and it is going to extend base command space We're just gonna cut and paste all this in and start hacking away at it. Control Shift O, get rid of a lot of a message, just please. We're gonna cancel on that one. Control Shift O again, we're gonna skip, I'm sorry. Uh, we want the Java one. Okay, we still got lots of. Okay, let's get our logging script um, up and ready. Oh, they've changed everything from the version that we had built this in. That's what's wrong. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit of time on this one. Got recommended a new book. Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. <laughs> That's an interesting name of a book. A book about game dev? Cool. I will have to make a note of that to check that out. I'm gonna save that up. Trello. Book. There we go. Save that. So if I open command base, we need to start rewording all these basically, right? Um, so compare to is gonna be called something else now. Only seven-ish hours on Audible. Definitely not that bad. Okay. I've still got a book here that I need to read. I got it for Christmas and I haven't even started on it. It's uh, Ghosts in the Wires by Kevin Mitnick. I was uh, watching quite a bit of his stuff 
interviews of him on YouTube. He's got quite the stories to tell. <sighs> I suppose this is the version of Minecraft where they changed the command system, and it's going to be completely different now. I don't know what of these we need. So let's say git name looks to be the same, right? Git name. Yeah, it looks like it's here. Somewhere. Or it's in the parent of this class. Yeah, I command probably hasn't. Hey, git name, cool. So that's good. We're going to call it uh, scan. I don't know why I want to keep putting two ends on the word scan. Um, git command usage. So let's search for anything usage. What's it returning? Returns commands.game.usage. Was there some definition of the commands in a JSON file or something under resources. Assets, death cube, lang. Open with notepad. Yeah, okay, there it is. So we need a language file with that in there. Um, so that means it's somehow convert a JSON parse exception into a user friendly exception. Executes really the meat that we need to do. Can command sender use get tab completion? Get a list of options for when the user presses the tab key. Great. I might need to look up a quick tutorial on how to do these. There's a lot more to it than what there used to be. Okay, let's do that real quick. See if there's anything quick I can find. Uh, Minecraft, forge, command, um, add, oops. add command, 1.12. One one Client only commands with forge, one two. My command handler. Let's just kill the sounds. I'm not going to do not disturb. There we go. Create an example command show. So like this. This is from 2017. This might be for an old version. My forge. 112. Okay. So why does compare to not match then? Compare to. Did it change its... Takes an I command now, okay. Skip. Cool. So let's see, command sender get usage is now what it's called. We'll add that to the JSON. Get aliases, do we have that in here? No. 
execute check permissions. It takes the Minecraft server and I command sender. That's probably what we actually want instead of this now. They probably just changed how it works. Tab completion options. Don't care about tab completion. You're on your own, guys. That seems to have fixed everything but this. And this needs to have some other methods added. Awesome. Execute. There we go. There's our execute line. Should have done that to begin with. Okay, so now it's just the meat of the old code or the old logic, which we don't need anymore. All right, so we're good. Um, this is going to be the meat of us scanning a thing too, right? So it's how we do. So if there's an error, it's going to basically say, you know, what the usage is. Let's go ahead and add that language file under resources. Um, I don't remember the full path for the so I gotta look it up. So it's main resources, assets, the name of the mod. So MC, MC2 Blender. Can you please go under assets though? Delete. NC2 Blender. New package. Dot lang. Inside there, we create a brand new file. New file. And it's going to be en us .lay. localization files and it's going to say scan and it's going to say scan and i don't know what else so we'll just leave it at this for right now okay so we can say command scan We're going to want to, in our main class, let's find the right text pad file for that. Death cube under server start. Fine, we'll put it server side. That's server side start. We need that forge window we just had open. Minecraft forge. Forge, add cans 112.2. Client only commands. Um, can't see if the class is order 112.2. I'm pre in it. Pre init right here. So we can say, let's do it after the items mod. Uh, commands. Mod commands. Dot init. And we didn't add mod commands.init in here. We did. It's public. Oh. Well, we don't actually need that, so.
Really? Can we do it that way? Client. C L I E N T command handler. Cool. Dot instance dot register new command. And the command is new. This command scanner. There we go, and we can get rid of this. And then the network's over here. Again, cool. Okay, one step closer. So this is looking at the length of the arguments passed, right? And if it does not equal one is what it's saying. Well, this whole end stuff we don't need to worry about. Refresh, we don't need to worry about. Where is that? Okay, so it is that one. So we can go from there to here. So, right, so if we've got one parameter, one additional argument on this, we're good. And then we're going to check the first one to do something, otherwise we're gonna say through an error. Uh, we're gonna show this specific error. This piece here, we're not worried about all of this junk because that's based on the old death cube code. Now I've got something that'll compile. So let's go ahead and run this again. Make sure that where I'm at is an accurate statement that it's registered correctly, all of that junk. Single player, this world. Can you load? There we go. Scan. It auto completes. Commands usage, scan usage. Not sure why I didn't show the uh, language file stuff, but if we need to, we can just put it right in there. We're just trying to get up, bootstrap this whole thing up. So if I do T. It shows game because we got to encode this one, right? Scan. That's all there is to it. We've got a command, and then we just need to add the meats there as to what the command's gonna do. I think we wanna say file name here, right? So. That'll be our file. The second one. There's really no check to do on it then, if that's the case. We're just going to grab that and say string file file name equals that. And we will check the Yeah, because if we did that, it just tells us usage again. Okay. There's some localization. Local lie. Localized message, that's not quite it. I don't think it uses the Apache stuff, does it? I don't think it does. So we'll just do this. 
uh, scan file name. And let's actually save this up to a string. String usage equals this. Terminate. And we'll say we return usage here. Return usage here. And there we go. So if MC to blend dot local one is not equal to null. Then we shall do this, else we will throw an error. And then we'll do the same for location two. And the error is gonna be string location ER location one not set equals location one not set location two So we've got a file name, we've got our two locations. We just need to start writing a file next. Save. Um, let's run this, make sure we get these error messages we're talking about. And then I need to start looking into the right way to write what I want to write. <laughs> Java. I could probably start closing some of this other stuff out too because I got a bunch of junk windows open around at this point. And clean up some stuff. Single player, this one. I think I hit debug, didn't I? I hope I hit debug because then I can do this changes on the fly that I'm going to do. Scan. Location one's not set, so if we left click, or, I'm sorry, right click. Location two's not set, if I right, shift right click, no error message at all because it worked. Yes! go back to this demon depths and see where we do the scan command okay so we're doing it here getting a path let's uh, see if we can get both these side by side Let's create another method altogether too. So um, this method's name is going to be down here. We're going to say save public void save to file. We're going to take in a parameter of the file name. Bring file name. Uh, block position. Location one, block, position, location two. And yeah, terminate, fine. 
We're gonna call in here the file name. Save the file, file name. And our static variables. There we go. And in here, we're gonna say something like FSO, blah, 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 blah. We don't have any open commands. Save inventory, single chunk. There's our writing, there we go. So we're going to string file name, file name, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so try file output stream. FSO equals new file output output stream. I'm going to say new file file name. Okay, we've opened our stream. And then we're going to get a DOS or a new data output stream. Which is based on FSO, file output stream, FOS, not FSO. Push it though. Yeah, file. And this is where we just loop through stuff. Okay. Uh, so DSOs, gotta get set. Data, output. Output stream, DOS, plus null. I'm gonna add a catch somewhere. You can make it a bull. Return true. Boolean. Get all of our imports going. There we go. So we're gonna assume that we actually successfully wrote it out. Um, if it's there, and we're gonna dos.close. So close the file when we're done. I don't know if, how we're saying what to write it with. So this is writing UTF, mob spawner. Okay. <clears throat> so the next piece we need to do is loop through the, the, the number of blocks between these positions. I think I'm gonna make it so that you click on the blocks that you're scanning. So we'll try that first. So we'll want to be inclusive in the points. So if we're at one and we, well, we left click, we right click one and we shift right click block two. So from on the X coordinate, we will want to include both of those blocks as part of it. So that would be a length of two. So that's two minus one plus one. All right, so uh, location two minus location one gives us an answer of one, but we need to add one more in because we're getting both of them. So let's try that with from one to three. That would be three total blocks we wanna get. So if we do three minus one plus one, that would be of us the three blocks. Okay, so let's go from four to six. We should get three. So if we did six minus four, that would give us two plus one. Okay, so that is our distance calculation, okay? Um, we need to get multiple X's, multiple Y's, multiple Z's. Let's do that first. So x1 int x1 equals location one dot get x. And you're thinking, why am I doing this, right? We got that already known. Well, we need to do which one's bigger. 
wait, 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 one, one, two, 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 two. Y and Z, Y and Z. Okay, so now we can say if x1 is bigger than x2, then x2 equals location one dot get x, and x1 equals location two. So we're just gonna flip the order basically. I'm gonna do the same for Y and Z. So that it doesn't matter where in the world or what the order is we click them in, it's gonna sort it out which one's bigger and make that the bigger one. And the bigger one will always be number two. Two version of ints will be the larger. Okay. And then we can get our distances, right? So, do we even need that? Uh, yeah, we do. We need a, we need a size. I want to store the size for the Blender Python script to know how big of an area we're working with right off the bat, because that was one of the mistakes or issues I kind of had. We we could only do a sixteen by sixteen because we knew what the coordinates were. So by knowing what those are by the reading the first three bytes or first three characters or whatever it might be, whatever mode we're doing this in, then it's very efficient for us to um, work with in the Blender side. So um, how are we going to do this? Uh, ints will be the larger. So we need to get an int width, int height int depth. So we're gonna say this one's gonna be our Z base, right? So Z2 minus Z1 plus one. Uh, Y2 minus Y1 plus one. And then X2 minus X1 plus one. There we go. So in our data output stream, we need to now go dos.write int. Can we write a string with this? I think we can. We can. dos.write utf. The string is going to be what? Um, width. And I'm doing this so it's more human readable, if that makes sense. So there's our width. And then we'll do our height. Should I do this lowercase? H E I G H T. Yeah, let's do the lowercase. W I D T H. Height. Let's do one more for the depth then. Okay, those are three known variables. Then basically we're gonna do from location one, no, from X, Y, Z, one, all of those, the for loop from those up to the for loop for the two versions, inclusive. So we're gonna do four X equals int x equals x1 because that's the smaller of the two until x equals x2 x plus plus boom boom so this will be their y y y Z, 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 Z2, 
at y, extra equal sign, and then z. That looks correct. Okay, and then we're just going to say, we need a world in this, don't we? Crap. We don't have a world here. We do have Minecraft server. So let's see here. Server.world.get world. Uh, what about sender? Sender.world. Your world entity, there we go. Oh, what time was that? Crap. Sender.get world entity. It's just a world. So on this, we need a world. So world's a construct in Minecraft that allows you to grab um, blocks and things, right? So which is what we need to do. So world dot get block stay at the lock position. There we go, perfect. So on this, so we're gonna do sender dot world. Entity world. Now my concern is that it's going to be server side only. We'll see. So new block position. What am I doing? Block position equals pp equals new block position. X, X, Y, Z. BP. Get name. Get. First off, let's write in some additional information here. Similar to this. Except we're going to call them X, Y, and Z. And this block state is going to be an I block state, which is interesting. Got get block, I think it is. Right, dot get name, localized name, registered name. And that should be a string. It's a resource location. Dot to string. So then we can say, uh, okay, so we'll do dos.writeutf. Um, block, block name. And then dos.writeutf. the block name and that's what we're gonna stop right there like I know there's more to this but I want to see this file get created like this with the height the width the X Y and Z coordinates and the block name if I can get that we're pretty good we're pretty far along um, we don't have a path set up for this either I'm not sure how that's gonna work I don't know if I'm uh... Hmm. This just took the file name from the server, right? Um, which took it from here, probably. Yeah, 
file name. So where's that call hierarchy go? <clears throat> Say blocks to file. And it's file name base, which was passed to this, which we can say call hierarchy on that, on command, and we're just giving it the path. So it's relative to the path of Minecraft. The Minecraft jars. Okay, so let's let's just run this. We've got our folder open over here, or we will momentarily, to where our path is. Uh, Blender to MC. We don't see any files here. Uh, I don't believe that's where it's going to show up. I think it's probably going to be in build. No. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, it's going to be in here. It'll be in there. Okay, so we open this up all the way. Let's get some interesting blocks. I don't know, some wood. Sponge, sure. Left click. Ah! Right click. Shift right click. Scan. Test. And look at that. As soon as I did that, this test file opened up over here. I open this with say notepad we have our width height and depth that are been recorded so it did a thing <laughs> may not have been the right thing but it did a thing so why didn't it so if I right click shift right click scan test Yes, open the window, open the file. Same thing. So let's uh, go into this and this, and this is another one. We wanna go into our third Eclipse window. Here we go. I'm gonna pull this one on this side and we're gonna set up our logging class. So it's very, very handy. So utility. Boom. Package. Dot utility. That's probably gonna. No, not yet. Okay. Eventually, it's gonna tell us we gotta kill the game. We want to call it log helper. And log helper will be this class exactly. You need help with programming? What's up? What you trying to do, man? What should we put a pizza? Oh no! Three toppings: uh, pepperoni, mushrooms, and sausage. There's your three toppings max. If you don't like one of those, ignore that one and make it two and save money. There we go. Cool. Log helper is now a thing. So in my items here, oh, you're gonna say if you don't like it, <laughs> yeah, but you opted for the more friendly option. I try to be friendly. Uh, okay, so log helper dot log is it info. Info. Sometimes you have to stand for the things that you love and not compromise. Yeah, but it's not my pizza. I don't have to eat it. You gotta eat it, man. I'll be on the items. That's a lesson learned. What? That's a lesson I learned in Kinfolk Tales of the Scorpion King? <laughs> what? POS. Position. Pause to scanned. Uh, not scanned, marked. 
marked as boop plus that. Probably known as Kinfolk, Intergalactic Well. Wow. Well, it's another dimension, that's what it should be. Well, it's another dimension, but like formatted so it's a semicolon, whatever that. That's part of the reason I gave up on I can't come up with a name for that freaking game. Kinfolk, yeah, maybe. Eh. But it needs a tagline after that. Okay, it is marking the positions. That's interesting. So when we do scan then, uh, right, this one, it gets to here and then just dies. Transdimensional well, 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 ha, 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 ha. Kinfolk, you could have saved a lot of time by just throwing a coin in the well. Oh, right click, shift right click. We need some feedback message to the user too for this. Like just put that mechanic in the game for them speedrunners. Where, oh, we didn't scan today. Let's scan. Test. Ooh, it did something that time because it took a little bit of lag. 100% speedrun kinfolk, two hours. Here. <laughs> yep, send any speedrun, 15 seconds. Exactly. If you know that you just got to throw it in there, game game credit screen. There we go. It's interesting that the returns aren't showing up like I expected, but it could be we need to open with TextPad instead, something that supports just the carriage return, not carriage return line feed. Thank you for the chair. Also, what's this nonsense those guys wanting to do? Not my house. Oh, you're talking about Esteban. Yeah, um, he has been my top cheer forever. He's in my gaming group, so like... He knows me and has followed for quite a while. <laughs> a little concerned that like there's some funky characters showing up in this, right? Why are we getting those characters? Our integers should be like super simple. I was referring to above the tree. Of. Oh, he was above you? Oh. Dang, he was one up in you. He's at 12, you're at 13 now. Huh. Well, now you're in your rightful position. Number two, right? Was that based on the excellent uh, pizza toppings comments that you've rewarded me with a cheer? It's interesting that uh, this didn't scan the area I thought it would, but it definitely scanned something. Because it got a lot of air, and let's face it, from there to there, there's not that much air. <laughs> Finally someone's beat him! <laughs> Thank you. Now I gotta taunt him. Cause like that's the fun thing to do with this guy, uh, Reaper. So he goes by Reaper on Discord. You have been on upped in the cheer category. Good. Glad it was decent.
that's eh, I'll leave it at that. Uh all hail king at pineapple. What? That did not take pineapple at all. What autocomplete in Discord does not like your name? Fine. And I hit tab and it just What? Oh, you've got another name now, don't you? New Cheer King. Hey, Bex. We're debugging stuff at this point. Uh, I wouldn't say it too successfully yet. I need to get this code a little bigger on my screen. X x equals x1 which should be the smaller of the two at this point right because we flip them here wait 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 if x1 is bigger yeah we move it around we want x1 to be the smaller two so that's the smaller of the two and we're saying we're going from x to from x until x2 by incrementing by one each time and that is the correct direction to do it in it is unless they're negative numbers both and they were but even then it's right because it's then the smaller one would still be x1 yeah that should still be right It's interesting that we can't see what the integer was because it's writing in a different format. So let's just write UTF for this and be done. And it doesn't take frick. Two stirring. Got two string. Can't do that? Really, there's no... Fine. There. I shall force you to be a string, because I say so. And we'll say, that you right, UTF, right, UTF, right, UTF. And I would hope Python could take a string and read it as text, right? Maybe it won't be able to. Or read it as a number. Okay, what are you guys airing off now? Oh, there's an extra Prince there. Did you know I recently found out about the string expression? What do you mean? Bring numbers into strings? Oh, cool. I definitely did something. Which language is that in? That you're talking about? It's too text bad. Well, they look like numbers now. That's good. Still got these funky characters here. JavaScript? Okay. I've never programmed in JavaScript. I've used Java plenty, but not JavaScript. Like, why is the Y position so varied? We've got something screwing with the Y position. Right there it is. Y, Y, Z, Z. Reload. Whoa, okay. Maybe it didn't update in Minecraft yet. So right click, shift right click. Reload. It's still scanning a big area. Uh, 
X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Width of three, height of two, depth of three. And then it goes into writing out craziness. Let, let's just make sure that the latest code is into the game by doing that. I have a feeling that didn't actually insert in for some reason. I've had times in the past where Eclipse gets funky and doesn't like to inject code by a runtime. Hopefully that was the case, kind of, because it's knowing when it starts happening. And it's close to time to restart Eclipse when it happens. the world we won't have anything any locations marked so we'll go ahead and do that we can see that we did get our position set okay we can say scan test it takes a second and it does its thing we get a reload and we get funky numbers our y is still getting set to something way too high right there it is That ran much faster, and we have something that's reasonable. Lots of air, a plank. Okay, phone charge time to hit the town and eat pizza. We'll have fun with that pizza, man. Pizzas, oh, more than one. What, are you going to do three different pizzas, one with each of the toppings? <laughs> so we've got sandstone, air, air, planks, air, air, sponge, and another sponge. Nice. I think it's doing what we wanted. Saying our width, height, and depth is correct. I'm large and in charge, so I need optimal calories. I am quite large as well. I am right there with you. Maybe not in the same way. I'm more round. <laughs> I'm rounder than I want to be, let's put that on. Just for health reasons. I tend to lean and I'm heavy, so it makes joint problems, blah, blah, blah. I need to work out, basically. <laughs> okay. Peace, man. Have a good evening. Catch you next time. So now let's make something more interesting. So that was just a beta test, right? Um, okay, and I'm gonna just go like this. And we can say, shift right click on you, and right click on you, and scan test. We get a whole bunch of interesting things with lots of sandstone. Yep, there's our bridge. There's the second side of the bridge. The tower, the tower. I think it's working. I think it's working. I don't know what else to say about this. Like, this is doing what I wanted for the initial pass. Now the next piece is how can we load this into Blender to convert these into blocks? And anywhere it says Minecraft colon air, we ignore it. Anywhere it says anything else, we do a full block. Um, yeah, that's all there's to it. Um, 
Let's do one more thing. Let's uh, open this in something else. No Pat Plus Plus and see if it gets the breaks. Ah, there we go. We can see what the characters are. So we've got a null and acknowledge and a null S O H. And then a null and a bell. And that knowledge. Wow. Well, we'll deal with this. We'll, we'll see how um, Blender Python can uh, import this stuff. Uh, here is our Blender. Let's go ahead and load it up. We're going to create a separate Blender file. We're going to create a new one. Like a V2 of it. We're going to open a recent Blender Python. And save as just a V2. Actually, if we hit plus. Oh, come on. Dang it. Get plus down here. There we go. That is the Blender way of incrementing the file name. Okay, so now we need a file path, which is in this location. Test. Um... Is there an easy way for me to comment all this? I doubt it. Nope, didn't think so. Do that. We want to do the try. We want to read from number one, or read one thing. Uh, while that, we don't want the bite stuff anymore. We don't want to do anything with what we read. And we want to read again, and then we want to do nothing, and then close. And what we are going to do, though, is say print byte. Save. Run you. Python failed. Look in the console for information. So if we go back here. Invalid argument. D two slashes, two slashes, one, two slash, two slash. Blender. Two slashes there. I'm not sure why Blender does this, but it does. Minecraft. So it's getting literally one byte at a time. Uh, looks like it finished. Okay. Yeah, so it literally grabbed one byte at a time. Now, was there a Python way to grab all of this and does it properly handle the same codes coming in? Uh, like the escape characters and all this stuff as saying that this is the end of that field. So time to learn Python again. Uh, Python read a file. Like I want to do the entire file into one object. I think you can do that in Python. Reading text in a Python f dot read. If you need to extract a string that contains all characters in the file, you can use the following method: file dot read or f dot read. Assuming in this case, yep. So we just get rid of the one and <laughs> read everything. Save, run. Instantaneously read it all. There we go. And there's a read line. Save. What are we getting the output this time? Kind of need to have that open on the same screen at the same time. It looks like it's doing. Minecraft block air. Can't read the rest of it. But there's a block air on each line, so each line is its own thing. Block name Minecraft air. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So, block name. 
X00, right? So that's the end of that line. Then it's got a type of R, Minecraft Air, 00 again, a type of X02, then the X, 00, then an X05, the number, X00, that's the end of that one, so X02, Oh, oh, XO2, the number. So we might be able to decipher that based on splitting it on those fields. But it's really interesting to me that those are showing up all in the same line. I don't get what in my Java code is triggering them to be on the same line. Why are all those the same line as this and this? What's triggering a new line character or a new, yeah, new line? Because basically Blender is treating that all as different lines. Yeah. Why are these all? Is it because the registry name has something special in it? It starts with block name. Does block name have something special in it? No. It's taking this as one line and this is Okay, what if we formatted it different, right? So what if we treated it more like a CSV file, right? So we could certainly do that. We could take and give a row of headers. We could even build multiple files if we need to. And then we could say block name, X coordinate, Y coordinate, Z coordinate. or XYZ block name in a CSV formatted style. It'd be really easy inside Java to build CSV, right? So we take this, put it up here. So I think that uh, this tool, uh, Python, sorry, uh, has mechanics built into it that read CSVs. If not, there's probably like a split command or something, I would imagine, where we could uh, fake it. So here we can get rid of this. We could say comma plus uh, plus y plus comma. Plus c comma plus comma plus the block name. And there's some other things I want to do with this, so we'll we'll do we'll do this. We'll do name uh, string name equals that. And we'll just keep it a little simpler this way name plus another comma let's actually put the name at the very end and let's create a bool boolean boolean uh, is full block equals world dot get block state block state from BP dot get block dot is full is full block returns true if the occupied states is one by one by a cube there we go and we need the state so we need world dot get block state bp it's such a weird way that minecraft does that i don't fully understand why they did it that way but whatever so then in here we say the bool. Okay, and in here we say DOS dot write UTF string uh, 
uh, is full. And I'm just going to do this until we get down to here. And all that gets replaced by that. Safe. We'll deal with this later on, right? We won't we won't worry about it right at the moment. Let's go back into Minecraft. Oops. Come on. Scan test. Then if we go here, reload. We are all one big line, really? Okay, what happens if we read line now? Let's do... I equals I equals I plus one. And then we're gonna print I as well. Save, run the script, look at our console. We had one line, that was all read as one line or one pass. So let's uh, try in our Java code. The slash n character at the end of each one of these lines. So that should be the new line character. Don't double escape me. There we go. Minecraft here. You've gotten skinny. There we go. Not sure what's with the percentages. So our first line is kind of our informational. So we say depth 10. Like that. And then we have our CSV formatted fast data. We've got true for sandstone being a full block. The air is not a full block. Let's uh, spice up our build here a bit. Let's put some stairs in here. Purple stairs. Scan that again. Purple stairs are not full blocks, which is what we wanted to see. So we can know inside Blender whether it should be a full cube or not. And by having a full cube, we can basically take this as whatever we want and just, we, we can ignore that portion of it if it's a full cube. So if this is true, we know we know no one by one by one cube. If it is not, then we need to look up what this is against some lookup table that defines the object that we're going to spawn in in Blender. Now, that's half the battle. The other half of the battle is what is the orientation of that block, right? So this purple stairs is facing to the south, right? This one's facing to the north and is on the top half, and its shape is straight, right? So as soon as we do this, then that shape changes. It's inner left. So we need to be able to maintain all of that information that gets displayed over here on the side about that block. In fact, this F3 screen is probably the best way for us to figure out how to capture that. I've tried other attempts at trying to get the metadata up or the additional data about a block before never found a good way of doing it. Um, maybe that F3 screen is what I need to dissect and figure out. 
But we're sitting at 9.30 almost. I'm gonna see if there's anything I can do about the F3 screen really fast. If there is, great. Um, just because I'm very curious at the moment how to go about doing that. Um, if not, we might need to call it a night. So let's see here. So in here, net Minecraft client, maybe GUI stuff. Let's see, is there anything that says de debug? Achievements, chats, toast, recipes, inventory. Maybe it's under rendering stuff. So we're in client right now. Renderer. Render. It's going to be like an overlay, right? Chunk, color, calling, debug. Debug, render. Render debug text. Chunk borders, collision, height map, pathfinding, solid face, water. And that sounds like it. So that's different types of debug information than what we're after. We're after the F3 screen specifically. Chunk render contents. Block state mapper, what's this? No, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. Texture entity debug calling. Okay, what about client keyboard interactions? That could give us the F3 button bindings and all that stuff. So, player inventory, no. Audio, entity, GUI, main, chat. Settings. Creative settings, game settings. Uh, debug. if the debug screen should play instead of the version. Advanced tooltips is F3H. Okay, we're in the right section, right? So where does that particular thing sh get shown? Key bindings, there we go. Nothing for F3. Bug. Mm, what's that called? What is it, an entity player render maybe? Dead mouse five head, what? <laughs> Dead mouse head, huh. Not saying it, guys. So let's do this. I think, uh, is there find project search? Find search debug. Nope, 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 not those.
Lots of matches. Okay, yeah, sure. But it's all my code, right? It's not the Minecraft code. Type package method constructor module constructor. It's either not searching on the way or there's something funky going on. Like, is it in the default render? Oh, what's something that shows up there? Uh, so the Minecraft version number. Towards negative. That's going to come from the system. The debug pi shift, right? Can we search for that? Pi bracket shift. Pi shift. There we go. Okay, now it is in the render class. No, this class, this is not synced. Sync, please. It's a GUI. <laughs> okay. And over on the right, we're going to say what when we look at things. All the different names, which are probably from code. There's nothing really showing. Let me say mods. And mods isn't going to show up. There's the towards directions, outside of world, waiting for chunk. You debug info right. Okay. Java version. Yep. Debug all block states. We'll type debug all block states. Get actual block state goes to block state. Get name for object from the block registry. Okay, so that's the block itself, which we've already got the name of the object, right? So we're getting the registered name. Then we're saying for each unmodifiable inner iterator, iterator, we're getting the properties from the entry set of the block state. And we're saying while it has a next, we're gonna get, we're gonna add to the property the name plus s, and we're defining s as being this. Okay, we're getting the property name. So that's facing. So really, it's this chunk of code. Creating a new property, getting the key from the entry. So entry is based on this. I have, that's a new class to me. Is that something part of Java? Google Collections, okay. I think we just take basically this. We've got it. <laughs> Something similar to it, right? So in our mod commands, nope, in our command scan, we're gonna create a new class. We're gonna call this, our new class, new method, public string, get block properties. There we go. 
And we've got this list thing. Where's the list to find it? It's array list of strings, basically, right? Yep, it's a list of strings. Uh, so we probably need to return a list of strings instead of just a string. Okay, so list string. And we're gonna say list list string list equals that. We're gonna say basically the same thing we did over here. New array list. But I really don't want to have that added in all this extra junk, right? I don't care about the extra junk. So what if we just give it nothing? Is it allowed? Ah, too many keys. Yeah, terminate, sure. So you're gonna need to control shift O. And which list is it though? It is that one. That needs to say capital case string. And we don't need this. We need the world here. Actually, we can get a block state into this. So I block state block state. I block state. And then this is no longer needed. So we're defining it in our method here. We don't need to worry about this because I don't know what this is doing. Sounds like a good plan, right? I don't know what it does. Let's just get rid of it. <laughs> uh, that's probably defined somewhere up here. What is that going to do for us? The T. No, we lost it. Come on. What are you? T extends comparable T. Yeah. That's a whole of my Java knowledge. I know it's like the typed type thing, but I don't get what that how that's set up. What's that imported from? Protected T extends comparable T. I mean, I could add that to my method, but I'm out of my league right there. That, that makes it work. There we go. So then all we have to do is this and here. And that needs to get a block state, so we say this. And then can we do dos dot right utf all of that? I doubt it. I have to loop through them. Yeah, didn't think so.
So DOS.WriteUTF. And now what we're gonna write is this, but we're gonna grab this as a list, list of type string. And we'll say L. When I say L dot count, you know, L dot length, L dot size. All right, size. Say property size. So we know how many read in, right? And then we're gonna say for L int I equals zero. I is less than L dot size and i dot or i plus plus now this may not work because it might not have enough we may not be able to get to a specific one from a list in java i think we did in c sharp the other day so i'm trying it l i string st equals that Type space supposed to be an array. Yep, that's what I thought. Might be a git. Yep, I. There we go. Okay, so that'll get what? The value? We want to get the key too. So L dot get. Hmm, that key set? Dot key. What? There is no keys. Right, 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 right. Right, this is supposed to be cold and separated. Do. Let's try it. Do we leave it running? We do not. Run. This will be my last run. All right. I hate leaving code in a bad position, but uh, we need to. If it's a bad position. Okay, single player, this world. Open you. Time set zero. Do. Game rule, do, daylight cycle, false. You can call me stupid. Right click you, shift right click you, scan test. Lots of stuff got written out, boom. Property size three, Minecraft sandstone, type sandstone, the coordinates? Or it's property size three, null, 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 <laughs> because it didn't return anything. Yeah, because that's the next block right there. Okay, so let's do this. Say true plus plus slash in. And then each time we write out the string, we'll say plus slash in. That way it, it gets a new line. Did I say that? I did. Yes. Hey, 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 that looks like stuff we wanted to work with. Sandstone. Property size two. So everything has a property? That's interesting. I mean, air is kind of hard to see, but sandstone has property size of three. 
sandstone type sandstone. So a blank one, a sandstone. So if I look at this, F3. Yeah. <gasps> oh, the name is part of it. Okay. The top one is always blank, though. Is that because they've inserted an extra line there in the original code and we can just kill it? Yep. That's exactly what it is. Yes. Property size 2, Minecraft sandstone, type sandstone. Property size... Perfect. So almost what we could do is get rid of the block type here and just rely on this, right? So we say property size one and it's type air. So we read in the coordinates if it's a full block or not. We read in the properties of that block and that properties of the block is gonna say that the type of the block. And if it's something like sandstone, we know it's Minecraft sandstone, but there's different types of or variants of sandstone, right? So if we look at this sandstone, there's all of these variants. So if we do F3H, oops, and go here, sandstone. We've got regular, we've got this kind, we've got this kind, and so on. So let's do that. Let's get it chiseled. They're different names. Oh no, they're both Minecraft sandstone. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So let's put, that and that so we should see smooth sandstone is a type and chisel so i don't have to do anything other than type scan again this gets updated we search for smooth there's smooth sandstone and there's chisel right there so we've got a type We've got a, a category and a subcategory on some. That's probably enough for tonight. Like, we're in a good position. I'm, I'm literally capturing all of the information about this now. So, top. Let's see. So we're saying top half facing north for this stair. That's everything I could need to know. We're in business. Let's uh, see. So there's should be one that says connected or something. If we grab that block and put it like that. Shape inner left. Oh, we can't find it. Are we wrapping? We are. Regular expression. Shape straight, shape straight. Straight, straight. Oh, why are we not getting that one? Did I not scan? We're not getting that. But let's verify that we're capturing out to here. And we'll get there to there, so it just should just cover that top row. Smaller file now. Really? Shape inner left. Why is that not getting captured? So let's look at the code for this. We're getting the debug write info here, right? The lag of meter. <laughs> uh, yeah, each of the properties should be listed there and it's just returning that list. I mean, this is literally everything on the right side of the screen. So where's this getting called? Uh, Open call hierarchy. Okay, let's do it this way. So 
so it's looking through the list and just drawing everything. Let's see where that's getting called. Assuming it's in this class as well. It is. There's nothing else. It just renders the lagometer if it's enabled. So why is shape inner left not getting captured? What's its coordinates? Let's do it that way. So we are at what coordinate? What, what What's special coordinate about that? So we're... 50 is its coordinate and the Z. No, 51, sorry. So we should see X, Y, Z, so 51. So comma, 51. And that is it, purpose to errors. Shape straight. Property size four, purple stairs, north, top half. Purple stairs facing north, top half. Shape says straight, but it's inner, left. Client versus server. No, because it should be the same there. It's probably client versus server. I need to make sure that command's running on the client somehow. So let's do this. Um, -do 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 -do. This world. Debug. Log helper. Info. World dot is remote. There we go. Scan, please. It was remote, so remote being true is the slave client. Hmm. Let's run it again to make sure that was the right true. I'm pretty sure it is though. So. Yeah, it is. And it is running it on the client thread. And this is GUI stuff. This has to be on the client, right? Sided client. So that means that this piece of code only exists on the client side. That. That is it. That is it right there. It's grabbing a different block state because it's getting the actual state. It's gonna need this.mc that world, which is gonna be hard to do. It's being constructed with the Minecraft piece automatic. So we're under GUI on the client. It's debug over there, okay? So let's go back up over here under Forge Client GUI GUI debug overlay GUI overlay debug something. There we go. And this is the piece of code. So if we go call hierarchy here, we can actually see it. It's in GUI in game.
Ah, there's some additional pieces that Minecraft Forge builds in. Probably that's how they add their additional stuff. Okay. Um, hey, where are you called from? And in it. This. Which is just the main Minecraft class. So what I'm not sure about is if those are the world that is remote or not, or if it's the server side. I can't tell. I'm going to say it's not, and we can just use... Gosh, the world that we're passing into this, I guess. We'll pass world into here. World. Terminate. I know I said I was going to be done. I'm a sucker for more code. And then we need a block position. Um, which we're getting over here. Wow. The mouse over position. So it's just the position we're looking at. getting the block state or this actual block state that's the difference this get actual block state is going to be the winner type train type world type default if it doesn't do it we might uh, try and run this anyway so we need a block position block position block position okay Makes this break because we need to add the BP there. And down here, we will just say world. And hopefully we're good. Run. Now that it's 10 o'clock. player this we need to scan again the points scan test open the file line 126 it says inner left now that's what it was so the way minecraft works is this block um, it's state, it thinks that it's that, right? But it's actually being rendered as that. That's what that's about. The get actual state picks up the state of it, how it's actually gonna render, which is different than the state that it's stored as. Same thing for fences, right? So if I took a fence and did this, Right, that's a fence. They're north, south, east, and west are not connected. But as soon as I do that, then they're connected, but it still realizes that it's just a fence. This the other stuff is just its actual state that it uses to render. 
But Minecraft just stores it as a fence. And that what that does is it allows it to, from a storage perspective, everything basically needs to go down to like 16 integer numbers. And this can be north, south, east, and west. One, two, three, four, right? And then there's a top and a bottom of those. A top or bottom facing, right? So let's do, whoa, that was weird. I grab that one and if I put it on the bottom of that thing, so you see it says half equals bottom. So we've already got eight of the digits already set up and it's straight, but look, it's the inner now. So that's another 16, right? And in this case, it may not be exactly the fact that it goes over, um, but it's possible for some of the blocks to go over the number of 16 that you can have. And maybe it's only eight, I don't remember. Um, but that's how they get away with it. So it looks at its adjacent blocks to determine its actual state at runtime instead of storing it in Minecraft in that particular format. So now we've got that. We're good to go. We've got all the information we need about these blocks um, to be able to go with us, right? Um, as far as creating a stair, right? So we need to create a stair block in Blender that is basically a full-size block, but with one whole quarter of it cut out, right? A quarter of it, um, if you could just slice it along the length of the block. And that's our stair. And then we need to create one like that. That's it. With one sixteenth of a cutout. I think there's no other stair blocks. Okay, there's that one as well, I guess. Right, so there's an outer corner. So there's none, straight, there's outer, there's inners. That's why they couldn't do it all. And so we need with like three quarters, three sixteenths of it gone. Three eighths of it, I guess it's an eighth, right? But yeah, um, and then the flipped rotated all the different variations, facings. That gives us our stairs. We've already got slabs figured out, right? So slabs are pretty easy. And my, my thought concept is not so much to get all these different textures necessarily, right? That's that's not it. I'm not stealing textures at all from Minecraft. I never would want to do that. Um, it's more about if I make a bridge that looks like that, I want to be able to take that geometry, my version of that geometry, and build it. So a one by one by one. A stair with a, a slat corner missing, you know, that type of thing. Half slabs. They could be different physical size. I could round the corners. All of these things are options that I could do in my version of it, right? I just want to know the placement of a full block versus a stair block versus a half slab block. Cool, cool. I think that's it for tonight, guys. Um, bye. Thanks, Pineapple, for the bits. You're awesome, man. <laughs> bye.